Since it's not time yet for Santa to be put in the presents underneath the tree, I figured let's share my top 23 Christmas DIYs of 2023. And a lot of these are viewer favorites. So if you have some crafts left to do or DIY project left to be made, hopefully these will inspire you with some ideas to finish up your season. And we're gonna count these down from least to favorite, starting with some upcycled ornaments. Oh, how I love me a thrift store people and how I love finding little items that will inspire you to make things like these bowls. Do you see what I see? You know you see it. Some ornaments, right? Some ornaments and you can make these into all kinds of ornaments. But first we got to get rid of these rusty little hooks that they have attached here. I was like, mm, I should probably be wearing gloves for this. I might end up needing a tetanus shot and my entire day is going to end up not where I planned it being if that's the case. It's a good idea before you go to paint anything that you thrift to clean it off with something. And then if you're using a chemical, always go over it with some hot water to make sure you get that extra residue off. I decided to go with a blue for this. And I honestly mixed a couple colors up and made sure that I had chalk paint mixed in there with it to get the tone of blue that I was looking for. Obviously, if you find something at the thrift store that reminds you of ornaments and you want to paint it, paint it whatever color you want. This is just what I was going with for these. I love how it dried. For the inside of our little ornaments, I wanted to put some bells in here and I had just the thing. I picked up these little clay molds recently off of Amazon and they're linked down in my Amazon affiliate link in the description box if you're interested. And I had one of each bell. I'm using my favorite clay. It is also down in the affiliate link to use for the molds. People, and I'm gonna say this real quick, use whatever clay you want, okay, to each their own. This is my favorite clay. I've used several different types of clays and this works best for me. I have hand grip strength issues. I also do furniture art. This sands down really well and it just works for all the things that I use it for. So to each your own, tomato, tomato. I just want to let you know in case you come in the comments and you're like, this works better. I am sure if that's what's great for you and I appreciate that, but this is not my first rodeo with clay. I've tested them out. This is what I like to use. And normally people, I also use wood glue for this. <laughs> use wood glue, but I'm out. So I'm using this Gorilla Glue gel. You just gotta wing it sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Use what you got accessible to you. And this is what I had. And it stuck on there just fine. You know what I mean? Especially once it dried, them little clay pieces are on there like a gem. Once everything dried, I took some of Dixie Belle's gilding wax and put a little bit on my finger and went around the edges of our ornaments here, the little bowls, and around our little clay piece. People, I have decided that for the rest of the Christmas season, I am going to make sure that I am doing one super easy craft in every single video. And for this particular craft, I'm going to take these ceramic wall decor pieces that Dollar Tree has, and they're fairly big, and just apply a circular stencil over to the top of them. I have a lot of people ask for easier crafts, so I'm going to make the effort to try to incorporate that more so. I feel personally stencils are really easy and they're also a great way to elevate even the simplest of Dollar Tree pieces. Even though I have some of you that say they struggle with stencils, maybe together as we're going along and I'm doing different ones, you will get the courage to try this a little bit more. People, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed these Christmas crafts. And until next time, bye! Coming in at number 21 and 20 are some simple Dollar Tree ornaments. Let's go ahead and open these up and we will paint two of these white. On my ornaments and things design, I have little tiny spots on there with just random things. One being this cute little bell. And in case you have purchased this and you're like, Brandy, what am I ever supposed to use that little piece for? 
Well, I'm going to show you what I, in mind, had when I plopped it on that paper. I'm just going to trim this down, and I've already painted the trees white. You know, I told you I was painting them white. Again, paint your paint your stuff whatever you want, but we got a white background here, so this is going to just blend in there perfectly, and then I'm tearing it off so it blends even better once we have our design on here find you a spot on your tree which i'm going to just kind of put this right here see how cute it's going to look we're going to take our patina we're going to plop this on here and then we're going to just plop this one down make sure it's even you know i'm horrible at making sure stuff's even though it's always lopsided don't tell nobody okay look at that look how cute and we're just going to let our tree dry for this next one, I got a little mistletoe, and I'm just going to trim this out just a little bit better. It's too, I left too much on there. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm just going to take our medium, smoosh it on down here, and then put our little piece right at the top. And any excess we have, we're just going to get rid of as soon as everything is completely dry. And there we go. I want to show you how you can see, see right there, you can see the disconnect with the medium and the paint. So you always want to make sure, no matter what, you go over this entire piece to keep the whole thing cohesive so you don't have a disconnect between the color and the medium. It's always going to give you a different contrast on your piece. This is going to help it look a little bit more high end. Ah! <laughs> well, not now. Oh, it's got glittery bits in it now. Of course it does. Now, I'm going to let these dry and I'm going to show you what else we're going to do to them. Get whatever kind of hangers you want. I'm just going to use these little twine pieces and grab you a couple little... <laughs> They're sticking to my hands. Grab me a couple, or you, a couple of little bells and squeeze them in here. We're going to have to, got to really show that tape on that sucker. This is such a tiny hole. I mean, seriously, did I have to make my life any more difficult? There we go. I'm just tying a little knot so these are stuck together, and then I'm going to take our ornament plop this through the little hole here and it's gonna give us a cute little bell right at the top where our tree is I think that it looks cheap when the edges aren't finished so I'm just taking some white paint and I'm going all around the edges so they are completely finished This one made the list mostly because so many love the technique. We're going to create some beautiful stain art on this little wide house I cut down. And people, if you're interested in how to cut down little wood houses or use a miter saw, this has some basic information about how to do all that. I'll pop this video down in the description box for you. After we get our stain art on here, we're going to use a stencil to pop some ornaments on here. Obviously, put whatever type of stencil you want. To get started with our stain art, grab you some acrylic paints and a little bit of water. People are always asking what the ratio is. Usually I use a couple tablespoons of water and honestly, the ratio to paint depends on you. The darker you want the color, obviously the more paint you want. I just mixed two different red colors in here to get what I thought made sense for the piece. Obviously do whatever colors you want to use. The top of this, I started with red and the bottom we're going to start mixing this English Ivy first. And then I had this Christmas green. I felt it was really deep green with just this color. So I had to pop in a little bit of brightness in there and that gave me just enough. I'm using two different paintbrushes for this process. And you'll notice that this is allowing our wood green to shine through and it is tinting the wood, the colors that we have mixed here. I want to blend them together, which is not always an easy thing because you can see that red line is already on the wood. So we're going to have to blend that out to meet the green so we don't have a harsh line. This can be a little tedious, 
but I promise if you keep your wood wet, did that come out right? Is that the right term? It is, it's the right term. You gotta keep the wood wet. If you allow these to start to dry, how I already mucked up and had that red harsh line there, you gotta do what I'm doing here and overlap the red even more to make it darker and then go back and forth. This can be really tedious. It took me about 30 minutes to actually blend these together, but it's so worth it once it's dry, how it gives you that beautiful ombre effect from one to the next. Just don't look at the back. It's still got a little bit of a line, okay? We don't, we don't see this. For this house, I wanted to pop a little chimney on this joint. So I had these square dowels that I picked up from Home Depot. You get 36 inches for just over $3, which I feel like is a really good price. So it never hurts to have these pieces in your arsenal. We're gonna need to bring in the miter shears to cut this sucker down. Well, at least I thought, cause I gotta be honest with you people. I, <laughs> as I was trying to cut this, I don't know who I'm kidding. I need the miter saw. <laughs> I definitely had to call on the miter saw to save my hands. The miter shears were not doing me any justice. To cut this shape, you're going to just leave the top part of our chimney straight and slant the bottom on a 45 or 31.6 angle. I decided to just paint this green so it matched the bottom of our house. And for our stencil piece, I'm gonna use Dixie Belle's Gold Gilding Wax and a tiny little paintbrush. I do want to stress that if you have time, take your time doing this. I rushed through it so it wasn't as precise as I want it to be, especially where the stars are. So just be mindful of that. Gilding Wax isn't like a paint, so when you're applying it, it can be a little bit messier with the bleed through. I did try to go back over it and move the stencil in precise little sections to adjust the stars. It turned out okay. I do wish I took a little bit more time to get those precise little sections. I also went over this with some more of the gilding wax with a light brush and took some of our wood glue and hot glue to attach the chimney. This DIY has simple and high-end stamped all over it. This is a nice chunk of two by six. Look at this chunky house. Anyhow, we are going to just give this a nice coat of Waverly chalk paint or any chalk paint will do. It usually just needs one coat with a chalk paint. And we're gonna grab some stamps for this project. Any stamps will do. Got these off Amazon, fairly inexpensive. What I personally liked about this stamp set is I had a little bit of everything. I had some words, I had some snowflakes, I had a little deer on here. And I don't know where my stamper piece is. I know I own one somewhere that, you know, you put the stamps on. So I'm just using this other stamp for the meantime. Sometimes you gotta wing it, people. What do I keep telling you? It's, we're gonna get there, okay? We're gonna get there with or without that stamper piece. See, we got the little deer down. Now I am taking the Merry Christmas one, stamping it, stamping it on up on the little ink pad and then pressing it in the top corner. And then I also pop some little snowflakes on here as well. Just a really nice little bundle of stamps, some versatility. And then I decided to distress it using the ink pad itself. And I love how gorgeous this turned out. This idea was a huge favorite and with the versatility of the idea, it's no wonder why. Wood ornaments next. And these are really rough too. We're gonna paint these. I'm gonna give these a nice layer of white paint. Oh my gosh. There's a tag on it, Brandy. It would help if you remove that.
Oof, look at that buttery deliciousness. I love fresh paint. Mm. It don't look like that for long, my friends. It don't look like that for long, but I love it. Little dippy dip. And let's just get some paint on here. For the little rounds, we are going all in on these tiny little angels right here. And I'm just going to make sure we get our design out. Since we have three of these, I also took out this little background. I thought it would look nice with these as well. And we're gonna grab our liquid patina. And in case I, I don't remember if I said it when I started, people use whatever medium you want. I am using this for the first time today to give y'all my opinion on it. And I've had so many people tell me I should be using this stuff. So I'm super happy to have it available. And if you guys are interested in it after watching this, like I said, the link is down in the description box. You guys can grab this from Unicorn Dust Designs. Her link is down there. But please keep in mind, Mod Podge works just fine. I've totally been using Mod Podge or Deco Arts Deco Podge. I love that stuff too. I've been using that for a while as well. For these beautiful pieces, we're going to need to find the holes. Get your minds out of the gutter, okay? I know where your heads were at with that one. We're going to poke a little so this way we can see where we're going to put our ornament pieces. And if you thought I was going to put anything else on here but antique wax, you don't know me very well. <laughs> Just kidding. So I love rustic things. And you can obviously use whatever you want to rustic to do these up but if you take just a smidge when your finger it goes such a long way and you just be gentle my fingers are already dirty enough so for those of you that are like oh my gosh listen just pile it on there we're crafting we're not supposed to be clean I decoupage a lot and one of the things I get asked to do the most are coaster pieces and I don't think I disappointed with these. Two different ideas for coasters. We're going to do two different sets of two. To seal over them so we don't see this pattern on the back, I'm going to just take some of this white chalk and cover over it to get us a nice base and I'm going to do that off camera. People, I decided that the mat for me, it looks nice and everything, but I'm putting these on coasters and I'm going to finish these with the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. So I'm going to actually use this multi-surface satin to give me a little bit of a sheen and then the final result is going to be glossy anyway. So I'm just going to switch. I got like first layer here. We're going to pop this on. And this is the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. I do plan on actually using these coasters. So I want to make sure that if I want to wipe them off or they get coffee on them because I'm going to set them at my desk. This way I have something that's going to protect them. And feel free to just tear your design if you want to. If you don't want to use any water, I'm just happening to use water. So I make sure that I go around the other little designs and don't mess those up. And people, if you are new to me, hi. <laughs> I like to use a fan brush to apply things whenever I'm working with tissue paper or napkins. It's super thin and it actually gets in up against like how I'm folding here. It pushes in extremely well where you have that connection and allows you a really seamless application. It's just I talk about this a lot in my decoupage videos for those of you that are just coming in and you're like, why is she using a fan brush? It's just a pepperant, pepperant, it's a pepperant, it's a peppermint. You guys do what you want. No, it's a preference. You guys can happily use whatever application, you know, method you want. I just really like using fan brush. 
since I'm sealing over the coaster anyway, I'm not really worried about having extra anywhere. Now this one I'm going to have to slant a smidge to make sure that this design is on here. It don't need to be perfect. I just want... Alright, listen. We're just going to put it all over the whole thing. Okay, we're going to be rebels here. Let's not cut our head off. There we go. And if you want to use some cling wrap to smooth this out, you go right ahead. I'm just using my finger and tapping and pulling and smooshing. And it's going on here, no problem. That's another reason I love this tissue paper. It is so easy to work with. I also do not like, unless it's really tiny sections, I don't like putting anything on top of this right away. I like to let it dry and then come back and seal over it or like get the edges off that kind of popped out. So I'm going to just let this dry and let's move on to our next one. Here are the two little designs we're going to be using. Super cute. Now these are going to be a little oversized. What is this? <laughs> They're going to be a little oversized for our piece and that's fine. We're just going to fit them on here however we can. Not a big deal. And um, if I, depending on what it looks like, I might go around the edges with some brown to blend out that white because I'm not so worried about the white necessarily blending in more so than I am the background of the design that we have here. So I'm going to just put the Mod Podge all over the whole piece and then just plop it down. And here goes our second one. And again, I'm just putting a thin layer of Mod Podge all over the whole towel, all the way to the ends. The cool thing about this is it's a small piece and the tissue paper is actually slightly forgiving. It's not like a napkin, so you can pull it up if you need to, where if you put the napkin down, that sucker is done. You are not pulling that up without issues. You feel me? All right. Oh, this is going to go... This is going to fit with the flower. Oh, I'm excited about this one. I'm going to let both of these dry just a little bit. And then I'm going to take some paint and touch up around the edges. These ones are dry. So we're going to touch these up. And you can obviously, you know, get your edges off however you want. These are just breaking. It's not a big deal. Sand them. If you want to sand them, use your burn method if you want to use burn method. But yeah. And now I'm going to just take some Mod Podge. Actually, you know what? This is going to bother me because you can slightly, it's not real noticeable, but you can slightly see where the decoupage paper ends. So I'm going to take some of our multi-surface satin and I'm going to just kind of blend in around the edges here so they look seamless. If you've never actually done this before, a good rule of thumb is to not just go in a swoop motion. You'll have a line and you'll still see a division. So you all unload and offload your brush just a little bit and then make sure that there's not a ton of paint. And since your background of your towel is white and we're using the same exact color and the background of our decoupage paper is also white, we can tap, tap, tap pulling the background into our decoupage paper. You can do this with a napkin as well or regular paper. I've done it with all of it and I've done it on furniture pieces too. Looks beautiful on furniture pieces, especially on like tabletops and stuff like that because then you really can't tell where one starts and one stops. But it's always good to blend the background color in so sometimes you want to have different colors in the background but the white makes it pop so when you get to the point where you're putting this around where your design is you want to make sure that the white is dominantly where the design is and as long as you're bringing the same color in it's hard to differentiate where your paper is and where the background stops so i'm just tappity tap tap tapping all along the edge this way we don't have a sharp edge with the paint and just popping it on here. 
I'm gonna let this dry a couple minutes and then we will seal over these. I decided to do the same exact thing with these coasters right here and took some brown and a little bit of Waverly's antique wax and go around the edges. I absolutely love these coasters, people. Let me know in the comments below if you plan on making coasters this holiday season. I waited until the next day to film like me sitting here so this way this did dry overnight and I just made this coffee right before I sat down to start filming this so it is fairly warm in case anyone is wondering how this is holding up but so you feel fuzzy inside and I feel fuzzy inside you know I would definitely recommend letting this cure <laughs> a couple weeks but, um, you know, for today, I thought it would be cute to have little coffee mugs sitting in there. And it's not hot or anything, and it doesn't feel like it's sticking. So I'm pretty happy with it 24 hours in. Of all the ornaments I DIY this season, these got the most praise. Next up are snowmen. For the three snowmen, we're going to take this design and we're going to put different sections of it on the snowman. And it's going to be a very delicate process, my friends, because we want to make sure that we leave enough of the design on there to make it look like a set. And we don't want to have these sharp edges so this way it doesn't blend in. This is going to take some finagling, <laughs> but we are going to get this one here. So first thing I'm going to start with this one, put us Once they dried, I sealed over them with some more liquid patina and then went around the edges with some black paint. I hope this DIY inspires you to use different things to create a set. This little house set, we're gonna need one small house and one large house. Both are one inch in thickness, so it makes sense to use these as a set. However, we're gonna create two entirely different designs, starting with some Mod Podge on this larger piece to get a nice, healthy layer of it to create an iron on method with some decoupage paper. Normally you want to create a base so your design pops through on the paper. Painting it white is a good rule of thumb but if your background on your paper or your napkin whatever you're ironing on is brown you can get away with leaving your wood neutral. This tends to take a little bit to dry, so we're gonna push that house to the side and work on our tiny baby house using a little snowflake from this mold with my favorite clay, this creative paper clay. And people, when it comes to clay, to each their own. Everybody has their favorites. I've tried several different kinds. I struggle with hand grip strength issues and this stuff is just super easy to mold and it never gives me a problem. So I love using this stuff. It also sands up really well. So if you're using this with furniture and you want to sand down pieces around corners, it sands beautifully. I was really impressed with the detail when this popped out. I knew that these were pretty little molds and really inexpensive off Amazon, but I was super happy with the detail once they came out. I took a little bit of wood glue and put a little circle right in the center and just gently smooshed our little snowflake one here. Now it's time to bring in our decoupage paper. This is Holiday Spirit from my TDS decoupage paper line that can be found at the DIYstruggle.com. These are 17 by 23 inches and this particular design has several options for you to choose from. This is created with tissue paper, so you can take a little bit of water on a paintbrush to get some really exact tears, or you can just rip it by hand. It is 
tad bit thicker than a napkin. Super easy to work with. Since I know I'm going to be sanding off any extra around the house, I'm just taking scissors and cutting out our little rectangle here. And then I am placing it exactly where I want it on the house. And people feel free to decoupage whatever you want on here. Take the idea and remix it to what works for you. I just really wanted to use this design. Now we're going to need to bring in the parchment paper and tear us off a little piece so we can put this over the TDS decoupage paper. Now you're going to need to bring in the iron and whatever iron you want will work for this. It has not been my experience that you need to have high temperatures just to do a simple iron on method unless you're using cling wrap and fabric. We're not going to get into that. I also want to let y'all know for those of you that I get comments from talking about small irons and not wanting to pay for the Cricut at mini iron walmart has a really small option for about 10 bucks when you remove the parchment paper check your ironing job it should all be nice and snug on here everything should be tough when you're pulling it if it comes off at all plop that parchment paper right back down on there and get your iron one just for a little bit longer take a sander and go around the edges if you want to be wild and do the burn method <laughs> you do you this works best for me and it comes off easily and the best part is with this when you leave your wood neutral and it has a tan background it looks like butter it is beautiful there's no wrinkles it is flawless you cannot tell where the paper ends and where the wood begins usually the clay takes some time to dry but i get impatient and for little tiny pieces don't tell nobody I take the heat gun to it and it dries up <laughs> fairly quickly. I took some red to match our decoupage paper and carefully painted up our little snowflake, added a little bit of gold gilding wax to bring out those details. And I cannot tell you how much I love this set. I do wish this tree was a little bit taller, but it was loved so much I had to put it at number 12 and share it. Check out this adorable book Christmas tree ornament that has inspired me to run to Dollar Tree, check out their books section, and then I spent a good 30 minutes or more finding books to stack on top of each other to create my own book Christmas tree to share with you all. Oh, it's the perfect size. But I put it back. I wasn't trying to get canceled on YouTube. <laughs> Instead, I grabbed these, which were roughly the exact same size. And I know I'm going to have you in the comments saying, how many books did you use? Honestly, I didn't count. And I will count while I'm editing this. So I can tell you in a little bit when we get to the end. <laughs> Look at the picture. We need to create a base on these and I'm going to use DIY's White Swan. If you're interested in this, I'll have it linked down in the description box. Sammy of her Unicorn Dust Designs has it available in her shop. We're going to give these a nice coverage. I actually used two coats on all the books because at the time that I was creating these, people, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with them just yet. I know if you're not familiar with me, I decoupage in my sleep. So it's a shocker that I wasn't trying to decoupage every single one of these books, but I wasn't. I wanted to give this little tree a bit of, you know, versatility. And the reality of it was I wasn't spending 20 and $30 on books to create the tree. So I had a minimal amount that I was working with to create our one foot tall tree. And a little tip, if I can tell you anything, see these hardcover books, you always have to paint the inside. If you do not create book decor often, you wouldn't know this, but let me tell you a little thump thump. Grab the non hardcover books because you don't have to worry about this part. You don't have to worry about covering up whatever design is inside of these hardcovers so it doesn't show through on the sides of your projects. Now, I do like hard covers if I'm just doing individual book decor pieces, but for something like this, this was a pain in my bootay and it just stalled the process because I didn't want to turn to the side of my book tree and then see some floral 
busyness sticking out where I was just too lazy to cover it up because you know sometimes you get too lazy to cover things up when you're crafting. Well maybe you don't but I do okay sometimes I do. It took me about an hour to paint all these books and people your girl cheated and used a heat gun okay and I didn't paint the bottom of none of the books just the top and the side. So I ended up deciding that I was going to decoupage a couple of these books and this one in particular was just about the perfect size for this TDS decoupage paper piece and the numbers you see how it's kind of wrapping around the spine I thought that would look awesome sticking out on our tree. If you're not familiar with me, I have a decoupage paper line. It's called TDS Decoupage Paper. It's tissue paper and there are a bunch of designs for you to choose from the links down in the description box. Check out them at thediystruggle.com. I absolutely love this print and I'm pretty sad that I end up covering up the woman with another book right on top of it. I know. I know. I love these little Mod Podge brushes I got off Amazon so much. I have been kind of using them for everything. <laughs> and for our medium, I'm just using some regular Mod Podge and applying on here and going little by little and wrapping this around our book. I found this napkin recently out in my travels, mostly at, you know, Home Goods. I found it at Home Goods. And I thought it would be perfect to tear out some of the words and they will fit right on the spines of these books just to give a little something something on the tree. You know, a little extra design. If you have never decoupaged with a napkin before, it is a good idea to make sure that you get all the little sneaky layers off your napkin just to decoupage the top layer. So that's all I'm doing here is tearing out the section I want and then pulling off those extra layers right on the back. Napkins are super thin and porous so keep in mind that less is more. Too much Mod Podge or too much medium is going to cause it to tear, especially if you're using such a tiny piece like this. So using a very thin layer of your medium will absolutely help reduce any chances of ruining your napkin as you're decoupaging. When I was happy with the amount of books I tossed some decoupage pieces on, I grabbed some paint and I mostly stuck with red and green. I needed a base for our tree and as much as I hated to cover this cute little piece up, I got it on clearance somewhere random and I'm almost positive I could recreate this Hello Pumpkin sign without a thought. However, I was a thousand percent sure that I didn't have a piece of square or anything this size to fit my book tree. So sacrifices had to be made. And we're going to use a piece of Hobby Lobby decorative paper and this stuff is super, super thick. So I'm going to decoupage it right onto here to give us a base. If you have never decoupaged with thick paper, let me give you a few tips. For this piece in particular, I cut it down to size and I wasn't worried about edges showing in the center because obviously it doesn't fit. We're going to have that completely covered with the books. So nobody's going to see it. Who's going to know? Who's going to know? Nobody except for me and you, but you're not going to tell nobody. Do the normal. Apply your Mod Podge, grab you something hard to press your piece down and then bring in a heat gun. And I've said this before that whenever you're heating up Mod Podge, it reactivates it. So if it's already dry, it reactivates it. It also creates a tacky texture. So if you're using a lot of Mod Podge in a section with thick paper, think of it like a marshmallow, okay? marshmallows they're normally sticky even if you touch them a little bit right but if you apply heat they get really really mushy right that's how our mod podge is it starts to get mushy it gets even tackier and then as it dries it hardens but if you applied more heat it's going to get mushy again 
So that's kind of how Mod Podge works. I didn't want to just do the iron one method here because I felt like this covering was plastic and I wasn't sure what that would look like <laughs> as I tried to do that method there. We're going to need to bring in the stapler. Oh yes, we're going to need to staple down one section of this book onto our piece here to make sure that it's not going anywhere. And you know, we're going to use glue too, but the stapler will make me feel fuzzier inside. And then I just started to kind of build and go. I put down some glue. I added our staples. I put one book at the bottom and then went with two books on each side. And in certain sections, I use these little wood splices to glue to create a stability section where there were some gaps, even though I know that I planned on at the time shoving some floral pieces in there or some garland. And people, there wasn't really no method to this madness. I just layered according to size and according to design as we went. I took some garland that I picked up from Dollar Tree from their plus section and started gluing it around. And please keep in mind, staples, wood glue, or Gorilla Glue gel will absolutely help keep this thing in place so it doesn't fall over on you. I took some ornaments and tiered them up at the top so it gave us more of a point. And I found a little star ornament that I glued to the very tippy top. Now here are my favorite ornaments I made this season. The last ones we're gonna do here, I actually got two different ideas for these, is to make a puzzle piece and a tag set. So this way we'll have two pieces dangling on one ornament. I want to use her. I love her. She's one of my favorite pieces actually. I wanna use her. Not sure how I wanna use her. But I want to use her one here. I might have her sit on there like that. And since we have little music ornaments on the puzzle piece, we're just going to take some of the extra little music ornament pieces and put right on here. So this way it's like a little set. Here's our last one. It's the camper. I love the little camper. Super cute. People, for this Tumbling Tower Block DIY, we're gonna be creating the Nutcracker. For the build, we're gonna need a lot of two by twos. And I just used a paintbrush with a little bit of wood glue and some hot glue. This way we had a long hold and an instant hold so I could just keep going. I'm gonna be completely candid and say this might be the last Tumbling Tower Block DIY that I ever make. It was very tedious. And in total, took me over five hours between the build and the painting and the details. I also let it set for 24 hours to completely dry. So this ain't going to be no easy peasy craft, okay? This is going to be time consuming, tedious, and you're going to need a little bit of patience. So I love y'all. <laughs> Here we go. For our top hat, you're going to need a total of eight blocks and you're just going to glue them up together, set them off to the side and then start creating our face. Again, another eight blocks. However, we're going to just put them sideways. So we got our top hat, we got our face, then push them to the side. We're gonna make our body using two sets of five tumbling blocks for a total of 10. Glue them together, and then put them the opposite way of the face. So we got our top hat, our face, and our body. So now we need some arms, right? So grab you four tumbling blocks, we need two for each side, and then we're going to put them on their side. Now it's time to make our bootay, and we're gonna need four tumbling blocks just like this. 
in this way he has a nice little round rump to sit on because he is a shelf sitter in case you did not know he is a nutcracker shelf sitter okay so we need to make sure he had a nice boote and some legs this is the top part of our legs they're going to be constructed together just like this and then here's like where the knees are you know what i'm saying like we're bending here so we're going to need a total of four so this way our you know the bottom parts of our legs are pretty long you know they're pretty long and now it's just time to really construct everything together using wood glue and hot glue. And don't forget the feet, people. I did use some tumbler blocks to make feet. I put two little tumbler blocks next to each other and I did leave a little hanging in the back for the heel. Now we just really have to put everything together. And I used the same, you know, wood glue and hot glue. And people, in case you're wondering and you want to ask me in the comments, do yourself a favor, don't because I will ignore you. If you ask me how many total tumbling blocks did I use <laughs> to make this? I don't know. <laughs> this crap. Oh my God. It turned out really cute and I love it, but mm -mm. no, I won't be, won't be constructing anything like this ever again out of tumbling blocks. Oh, and I did pop a neck in there. I did pop a neck. Please bear with me with the whole build. I was, I didn't have no blueprints as I was going about this. And that's another reason it took me so long to get the build because I didn't know exactly how I was going to make this. So there is a lot of footage that I didn't even pop in here from stuff that I was gluing together and it just didn't work. So once I got the build down, I then was able to just kind of give you guys the really edited version to get the nutcracker body. This thing was looking a little flat to me. So I did take four tumbling blocks and pop right here on the chest. So once we have our design and painted, the jacket will pop out just a bit. I wanted our arms to stick out a little bit. So we needed to make some shoulders. I had these little blocks that I picked up from Dollar Tree and used these again applying some wood glue and hot glue and then did glue them just a smidge higher than what I had the tumbling blocks. This way it looked like we had some shoulders going on and I will tell you these were really frustrating. I had to go over these several times adding more wood glue and hot glue. They kept detaching so there's probably a better way to attach shoulders However, at the time, this is what I had accessible to me and this was the idea and the look I was going for. But just a heads up, if you go to recreate this, it will be the most frustrating piece. When I had these attached, I then just grabbed the arms and placed them right on to these. Now, what I would recommend that I would do differently is at this point, I would just quit. I would quit and then take wood glue and put it all over those arm joints and let it dry overnight before continuing to glue the rest of your project. Or I would glue the rest of the project and then do the arms last and then let it dry. But either way, they kept getting a little wiggly as I was attaching everything else. And then as I was going, you'll see here, I am like, okay, let me add some glue in here. And then I started to take some of the wood glue and paint all along the back because I was getting nervous because of the arms kind of popping out a bit. I wanted to make sure that I was putting braces to ensure that this was not going to fall apart. And I'm sure as many of you know who do create tumbling tower block crafts, it can be so sad when you spend time building it. And then if it's not put together properly, a piece falls off or later or something and it happens so I wanted to make sure as I was sharing this with all of you that I'm letting you know the issues that I'm having and what I would do to fix it. So if you go to make this at home, yours is definitely sturdier and you won't have any issues. However, mine's doing pretty good at sitting next to me right now. But the build itself was very frustrating because everything was newly glued. And trust, when I had this completely put together, I went over the entire thing with more wood glue to make sure that this was going to hold together. So the next day when I went to paint it and had to put the details on, we did not have any issues. These are the only colors I'm using. And if you don't have the Dixie Belle gold gilding wax, just use some gold paint or you could also use that rub and buff stuff.
when I got to this point, I couldn't help but feel like something was missing. And I'm like, you know what? I wanna keep this piece kind of a little modern, but he needs a nose. And I found this at Dollar Tree recently, and I thought if I just nip a corner off of one of these little pieces, it was gonna give me the perfect size nose that just protruded out. And no, I did not introduce some lighter shears. Look at me, I completely forgot. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my God. Let's just pretend it never happened, okay? I won't tell nobody if you don't. I had these in my stash and I'm like, we're gonna use the little gold bits to add some accents onto our nutcracker. And this was absolutely tedious <laughs> as well. Are you shocked? Because you shouldn't be. It was definitely tedious rubbing these little joints on there. They were not sticking as well as I would have liked them to as I'm rubbing. So then I had to keep pressing them on and then I'm like, please don't break off. Even though I know I constructed this pretty well, but you still got to wonder. I took that gilding wax and then kind of just drew some little accents around where the neck was to make a collar around the boots to make the top of the boots and to give him some little shoulder pads. And of course, I had to add a little mustache. People, for all the trouble, he sure turned out pretty great. I am always looking for stools no matter where I'm at. Bullseye Playground, thrift store, all the things. This joint was $3, people, and I just had to have it. I'm like, this will be absolutely perfect for me to just incorporate into staging really any time of year, not just Christmas. We're going to give it a very vintage makeover with some white paint starting with a little sanding of course with this 180 grit because we got to get that sheen off of here to ensure that our paint is going to stick to the surface once i was done that i did wipe all the excess sand down just to make sure we didn't have any bits in there between our paint and i'm gonna take this black inked chalk paint by waverly and give it a messy coverage i'm not trying to necessarily cover all of the brown. I just want to make sure there is some different variations. So once we put our crackle on here, we're gonna see that beautiful vintage look pop through all the different cracks in our paint. I let this completely dry and I love how it looks even just on its own like this, but I'm trying to make a little Christmassy here. <laughs> so we're going to take our crackle. If you guys have not used this stuff before, it's amazing. It's also down in my Amazon affiliate link in the description box. You want to just put a light layer on and be very purposeful with this stuff. I always try to let people know that it is not forgiving. So make sure that exactly where you're placing this, you want that crackle effect to show through or you do not care if your paint is separating in those sections. So for the stool itself, I did leave a couple little spots, so this way I could have a few sections of some solid coverage. And then I took a white multi-surface paint and went over with the brush in singular strokes. And I say that, people, because this stuff is not made for you to go back and forth over it. If you go back over a section once the crackle is dry, it is going to just pull the crackle off and you're gonna have a huge separation, which is why I said make sure you're purposeful and you don't mind in those sections if there is some separation. Luckily for this stuff, because you are going for a vintage look when you're using it, if there is a little bit of separation, it's usually not a big deal at all. A little tip I learned from Sammy over at Unicorn Dust Designs is if you take your heat gun over this stuff, it works like magic and separates it even more so i really 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 wanted this to be extremely cracked up and i took that heat gun and really focused it in on certain areas to get a beautiful open cracked look look at that it's so 
beautiful to me. I absolutely love this. And you can see on the top here where there are some sections with no crackle. That is where I didn't put any. So we had a few solid pieces. I wanted to add a little bit of writing and had these transfers from Dollar Tree and just cut out the little sections with the words. And I did cut out one of the little emblems and just transfer right on the top. So many of you loved the way this turned out and I really enjoyed the technique. For this scrap wood project, I'm using a two by six. And as you can tell, I have beat up this board. I beat the board, okay? We want it to look a little worn when we're all done. And for our stain art aspect, I'm using a baby wipe with some red paint, about a tablespoon of paint, and about a half a cup of water. You could use more or less, really just depends on you. And I'm using some green. The green depends on you. Now, in my last video, I did some stain art with these colors and y'all are a hot mess. You were like, it looks like a watermelon. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I'm going to take some deeper green this time just to kind of take the edge off. Okay. So you guys be nice to me. It doesn't look like a watermelon anymore. Now we're taking some of this white chalk paint and we're going to put a nice base right on the front so we have a nice spot to put our stencils i spent a hot minute looking through the cricut design space for the perfect piece to pop on here i didn't want the everyday little design i wanted something unique that i feel like i had not really seen before and found this stunning ornate looking moose now i was like oh the weeding is going to be a struggle here but you know what? I'd have weeded this thing a thousand times after y'all see the end result on this. It's, it's absolutely stunning. I plopped the Cricut transfer tape down on here and grabbed my design so that way we could put it onto the wood. And I also printed out a little Merry Christmas sign that I thought favored the moose very well. Once I got both pieces on the board, I was like, let's not use paint. Let's grab some of my Dixie Bell gilding wax and we'll do it in the gold. So this way the design pops and we're not going to do it the way you think we're going to do it. Instead, we're going to actually put the gold all around the pieces. So it kind of makes it look like it's shadowed onto our wood design instead of just stenciling on the inside we're going to stencil on the outside. It's kind of like a reverse stencil. You guys picking up what I'm putting down? <laughs> if you've never used gilding wax before, this stuff's a little thick. It's like a paste, but you know, be mindful. Okay. Be mindful. That's all I'm going to say. You could absolutely use regular paint to do this as well. It will still turn out very gorgeous. Just make sure you're getting in all those little crevices. I decided to wrap some ribbon around this and pop a little gold flower. This is absolutely stunning. I love how this turned out so much. This is hands down one of the most flawless napkin projects I've ever done. People, we are going to get really artsy fartsy in this house and I'm going to go over a couple techniques with you so you can recreate this piece at home or, you know, something like it or use the techniques to create something you want. <laughs> First, we're going to need to create a base. You can pick whatever color you want. I'm choosing to use black and I'm doing it with a chalk paint. I'm spraying a little bit of water here just to be able to thin out our chalk paint. Chalk paint can be clumpy and water can help one, the paint go longer and two, it should just apply really smooth. Plus I like that sometimes it leaves a little bit of that wood grain show through. Now you're gonna need some crackle. Have you used this before? It's amazing if you haven't. It's also in my Amazon affiliate down in the description box. I love this stuff. Sammy over at Unicorn Dust Design put me onto this a hot minute ago. I have been using it ever since. A couple little tips and things to know when you're working with this medium. It's super thin. 
It's not forgiving. So be purposeful with your placement. I plan on decoupaging iron on method napkin right in the center of this. So I know I'm going to need to paint it white. I am making sure to not put any of the crackle in the very center. Let this dry completely. You don't want to start going over this with paint before it's dry. Now, since I'm decoupaging the center, I want the design on my napkin to pop through. So I am putting one layer on the center in white before I cover the entire house. This way the center will have two layers of white. You only get one layer with the outside because you, for some odd reason, cannot go over the crackle more than once. And it's going to look weird at first. You're going to be like, oh, there's paint stripes. Trust me, once the crackle starts taking effect, it's not going to matter. You're not going to care. It looks scary, especially when you're doing furniture pieces. But the crackling almost starts immediately. And you can take a heat gun to make it more dramatic as it's drying. You can see right here, I haven't even started the whole house. And where we started, it's already starting to crackle up just a little bit. I give you a better view in just a second. But a tip I do want to share that I think is a good one to try out is to load your brush up and just go up in stripes. Put a decent amount of paint and just pull it all the way up. And like I said, it's not going to matter. Right now you can see the individual brush strokes, but once the crackle starts really taking effect, everything's just going to blend together seamlessly. Since I'm ironing on a very thin white background napkin with a very, very light design, it was important to not have that crackle on the center so it didn't pop through the napkin. If you go to iron on a napkin with something like this, make sure that your crackle and paint is all dried up. And look at that, people. Look how stunning that is. I love the way that looks. But you're going to make sure that this is all dry, okay? Before you apply your Mod Podge. Here's our beautiful napkin. And I'm going to just take and tear out this design. The cool thing about this particular napkin is it's on each one of the little squares. So you really get four little designs, four opportunities to use this. And for those interested, yes, this particular napkin is in my Christmas bundle on my website. You can use water on a paintbrush to tear it if you want. I knew I wasn't getting too specific here, so I just tore it all up with my hands. And then you need to get those sneaky layers off of the decorative layer. We're just going to be working with the top decorative layer. You'll be able to see your hand through it. It's so thin. If you do your job when you're creating a piece like this, especially when you got that crackle on there, you're not going to be able to see where this napkin ends and where the paint starts. So it's important to go around the design where it's going to blend in with that paint and the crackle. So to get a more detailed edge, I am just taking a little bit of water on a tiny, tiny little paintbrush and curving it into where that crackle starts. So once we get that napkin ironed on here, it's going to look absolutely seamless. Take your Mod Podge and put a nice, thick, healthy layer on here all the way out to the edge. Just cover the entire piece. And I say this because... If you don't, you're going to be able to see where the Mod Podge wasn't, and it'd be uneven once you put it on over as a sealer. Once it's all dry, it's time to get your iron on. So grab you some parchment paper and lay it gingerly over top of your napkin, and then grab your iron and go over this. Couple minutes, well, really. <laughs> It only takes a couple seconds, but if you're anything like me, you might do it for two or three minutes. And people, look how flippin' flawless this application is. You cannot tell where the napkin ends. It's stunning. I have done the iron on method so many times, people, but when you're using the crackle for whatever reason, the napkin just blends so stunningly into that medium and you cannot tell that this is not one piece. This might be one of the last Tumbling Tower Blar projects I ever do.
This candy cane is a big Bama, so I knew I was gonna need a support system like this piece of cardboard that is 19 by 13 inches. And of course, let's not forget the tumbling tower block. Now people, if I'm being 100 with you, I scoured the internet to see if I could find something that I could even mimic for a build for this candy cane and I found nothing. With that being said, I will spare you all the footage that I went through trying to find a build that would make sense for this candy cane and came up with this one. And even once I was satisfied with how I was creating the stem here, when I got to the tippy top, I still, <laughs> it had its struggles. And at this point I was already like, well, we might as well open another box because I don't see an end in sight here at the current moment. And here's where we landed, minus the two little square nubs you see in the corner up there. I didn't end up using them. And then I decided to get a little professional on y'all and bring in my little white chalk marker and let y'all know how many tumbling blocks I used in the sections. So if anybody wants to recreate this joint, you have exact numbers, which, you know, absorb this people because it's not something I always <laughs> typically take time to do okay so it's 27 in the total center of the length of our stem here and then nine on each side of the stem giving you a total of 18 look at my little arrows I'm drawing for you our little hook piece has six and then on each side is two giving you a total of 10 blocks just to create our little hook and then the actual bridge from one side to the next has a total of nine. And then I put one on the outside of each. People go about this whatever way you want. I'm showing you how I did it. And I decided to take a pencil and trace the candy cane. And then I cut it down to size to meet the trace. I decided to still use my favorite type on wood glue and some hot glue to attach the pieces. Only I smeared the wood glue on the cardboard and left some gaps so this way I could put the hot glue in between, ensuring that we're going to have a long hold and a quick hold so I can just keep attaching the tumbling blocks. I also made sure that as I was stacking these on top of one another that I was stopping to lift the candy cane up to make sure that they were all holding and it was still straight. Nothing would have pissed me off more than I got all the way to the top and realized that everything was completely lopsided. When I got to the top, I could have just went straight up and then went over, but I wanted to just leave a little space. And again, you create this how you want. I was building this with my own imagination. So it made sense to me the way that I was putting it together. And I love the end result anyway, so I'm really happy with how it's constructed. I did not feel fuzzy inside at all trying to create something this big and not have a brace for it. Absolutely, you could do this without the cardboard. I just did not want to take a chance on everything just eventually falling apart, even though we still had these struggles. Because I didn't put wood glue and hot glue in between, the actual blocks and just mostly put it on the cardboard, I did have some issues with the cardboard bending. So to save more time and struggle of that happening later after the project was finished, I just took a minute with a paintbrush and went in between every little section that I could and smushed as much wood glue in there as I could. I let this dry for a couple hours and then came back in with an X-Acto knife and trimmed any excess that was dangling over of the cardboard from around our towering tumbling blocks. Because the piece is almost two feet long, I thought it would be in our best interest to pop some paint sticks on the back of this joint for some extra stability. And I use the wood glue and the hot glue, just going in like a straight section throughout the middle and including our little walkway and the hook on the opposite side. <laughs> the little walkway to the opposite side of the candy cane. And I'm pretty happy with the build. It's not flimsy at all now that it's all dried up. It's been a couple days and it's doing really well. Obviously paint your candy cane whatever color you want people. I'm going with the good old traditional red and white and I'm using Waverly's white chalk paints giving it nice coat and I only had to do one coat. It went on really well and then I dried it on up. Now I'm taking the painter's tape and starting with our hook, 
And the reason why I decided to start on this side is because I was nervous that if I started on the longer side with our two red mixed paints, I'm taking two of these to mix together to get one color just because I didn't think it would turn out the way I want it if I just use one or the other. That's just how my creative brain works, okay? You painters, whatever color red you want. Okay, maybe you just got one color. I'm using two. Anyhow, back to why I'm putting the painter's tape on the way that I am with the end of the hook. I was scared that if I came up the long ends, that by the time we got to the short ends, I wouldn't have my stripes going in a way that made sense across the walkway, you know, from one side of our candy cane to the other. So I decided to start with the small ends and then work our way. And I even like did this stripe kind of slanted to give it the appearance that, you know, it's spinning. I'm not sure if anybody else, you know, sees the vision here, but in my mind, it makes sense. A little help to reduce some bleed through is to make sure that your paintbrush is practically dry and then start where the painter's tape is doing little dry circles. You could also paint over the painter's tape with white paint, let that dry, and then come in with your red paint or use Mod Podge. I find that this technique is super quick and really effective. Once that dry paint is all on there, then just go over with some more red paint. Now, people, don't let me perpetrate here. I pretended like I was going to show y'all how I greened this up. However, I did not. <laughs> I did not really get into it, but I did put, you know, this little metal ribbon around our candy cane here and I made some greenery and a little ribbon and it was very tiresome. This was probably the most difficult thing of all of it for me, but I absolutely love how this candy cane turned out. Let me know if you guys plan on making one this season. Etsy piece you could certainly cut up and create it however I grabbed this last year at five below and thought it would make the perfect thing to create this dupe with and it was just four dollars now truth be told my friends I have not been to five below searching for this piece this year so I'm not sure if they still have it so you might have to build your own <laughs> just kidding hopefully they have it okay hopefully they have it I'm gonna recreate this with the intent and sending out the positive vibes that if you want to recreate this at home, Five Below has this waiting for you. This might have been one of the easiest things I've ever had to assemble. And just to make sure that the piece didn't go falling apart, I grabbed some of my Gorilla Glue gel to smoosh right on in between these little sections. You could certainly use wood glue if you had it. I just had this right next to me and thought I was going to just smoosh a little section in one of the little sides. I did the same thing for the top of the piece, push that to the side and then grab me some greenery and a couple of these little candy picks that I think I picked up from Hobby Lobby. Don't quote me on that one. I attached everything together with a couple little pieces of wire and glued it to our tree. And this piece turned out so amazing. Let's take one last look at the Epsi piece and now let's check out mine. It made it to the top three. I obviously love this piece very much. This little house is probably one of my favorite pieces I have ever decoupaged. And it's so flippin' simple. First, you're gonna take some Mod Podge and just put a nice healthy layer all over the front because we're going to iron our TDS decoupage paper right on the front of this. Set this to the side and let this dry. I picked these little pieces up at Home Depot. I thought they would look awesome as a little chimney. These are little copper, you know, metal flat shoe thingies, and they're just $2.34. And they fit right on top of these little square dowels perfectly. So you just cut an angle, 31.6 or 45 degree angle, whatever angle is going to fit your roof that you have cut, and 
you're going to glue that little flat shoe thingy right to the top. I'm painting this black because I am going to paint the roof black and it matches our little flat shoe thingy. And here is the design that we're going to be ironing on here. I absolutely love this little reindeer piece. This is part of the TDS decoupage paper line and the paper is called Tis the Season. People take any of these decoupage ideas and remix them to whatever works for you. Use whatever kind of paper, use whatever kind of napkins you want. This is just what I want it to use to inspire you and give you ideas. I'm taking a little bit of water here on a paintbrush and just pulling off the edges. It is my personal opinion that this blends better than having sharp cut edges. So I'm just going around the edges kind of fraying it. I want to dingy this up just a bit so I'm taking a little bit of water with some antique Waverly wax just on my fingers and going all around the edges of this paper. When I was happy with that I put this in place right in the center of our house. Grab some parchment paper and broaden the iron. Give this a nice rub with the iron for a minute or two. I like to do like two to three minutes really just to feel fuzzy inside. Some people might do just a couple seconds. <laughs> it probably doesn't really take that long, but I just feel fuzzier inside two to three minutes. And then I pull up the little piece, check to make sure everything is secured all around the edges. And if it is, I'm on to the next step, which in this case is rubbing some antique Waverly wax all around the entire piece. I painted the roof black, glued on our little chimney top and stuffed some greenery down in that chimney just to add a little extra something. I love how this piece turned out. It's so rustic. It's absolutely stunning. People, as always, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. And until next time. these pine cone Christmas trees. I was lucky enough to have an amazing subscriber send me these giant pine cones. Thank you very much, Terry. She was also sweet enough to clean the suckers out because I was like, oh girl, I don't do bugs. She's like, I got you. Check these out. They were literally bigger than my hand. I had a couple ideas for these, but since we're at the beginning of the season, and I'm like, I can use these as little accents as I'm going through to add to decorate. I wanted to create a Christmas tree set. Flock, of course. And these needed a nice rustic base. And I had these little Dollar Tree cube pieces that I picked up a little while ago and I thought these would make awesome little bases. I can take some papers and just decoupage them on there and it the theme kind of just goes with the rusticness of the pine cones as it is. I mean, people, let me know in the comments, do you feel like pine cones are rustic? Because I think they're rustic all on their own. Now we're going to need to bring in the decoupage paper. I'm going to use this and some of Hobby Lobby's paper, but there is a particular little spot right here on this TDS decoupage paper. This is from my TDS decoupage line. It can be found at the DIYstruggle.com. I just wanted to take this little section right here and cut it and put a couple little pieces on these dice, mostly because the colors are going to match exactly with this paper that I have had and I love that I pick up from Hobby Lobby. And as you can see here, the two prints complement each other really well. And if you didn't know, you can pick up paper really inexpensively from Hobby Lobby if you have one local to you and you like to craft. I wasn't exactly sure which sections I wanted from the paper, so I cut off several little pieces. For our medium to attach it, I'm going to be using Deco Arts decoupage in the mat. Of course, use whatever medium you want. Regular Mod Podge would do the trick just fine. I'm putting a healthy amount on here and then I'm just gently pressing our piece. And no, I did not cut a perfect circle. You're welcome to, but I'm going to sand this off. And for those of you that love the burn method, you want to do that as well. You go right ahead. I just like to sand my pieces and I feel like it works just fine. So I cut the pieces in a circle. I applied them and then I let them dry for about 30 minutes. And while they were drying, I took the opportunity to flock our trees using this multi-surface paint. There are many ways to do this, people. You can use your glitter. You could use joint compound. You could use spackling. You could use caulk. If you want more of like the crusty white bits all over the place, I'm like, nobody's going to see them but me and you. If you're watching my videos, they're going to be little decorative accents, you know, my displays. 
and I'm gonna probably pop around for Christmas. So I'm completely content just using some paint for this part. Now it's time to bring in our little finger sander so we can get the excess off around our paper. Please make sure that whenever you go to do this, if you're new to decoupage, it is really important to make sure that is dry. If not, no matter if it's paper, even a thicker piece of paper, or if it's a napkin, if you start sanding too early, it is just going to move and tear it. You have to get a little bit of patience, people. I know it can be rough, but patience is key to making sure that this looks flawless on here once it's sanded. I really loved how the colors from the TDS decoupage paper complemented the little pieces that I chose from the Hobby Lobby paper and then took some of Waverly's wax and went around the cube and went, or the dice, the dice, <laughs> and went around our little pieces of paper that we decoupaged on here just to make it all rustic and fabulous. To attach the pine cones to our little base, I'm just using some hot glue. People don't do as I do, okay? I am out of wood glue, and later on in the video, I do find some Gorilla Glue gel, but make sure you're using a glue that is going to hold these suckers onto here, okay? <laughs> Your girl needs to make a trip to the store, okay? Shocker. I took some little, look how cute these are. These are from Dollar Tree, the little Christmas bells. I glued them on to different little sections on the smaller trees and left the top one blank and put a little star right at the top of that one. And I cannot tell you how much I love these pieces. I always feel so blessed whenever people send me things and wanna see what I create with them. I hope I did not disappoint her. Let me know in the comments below if you plan on making any of these for the holiday season. I could not believe the overwhelming amount of love I received from this project, so it had to go in the number one space. I always forget about Etsy and all the amazing things they have to offer on their website, but not today, not today. People, we are gonna be duping this beautiful painted piece from Etsy using some Dollar Tree wood hanging decor pieces, and we're gonna need three, three to be exact. We will need three for this project and some popsicle sticks. Let's not forget the popsicle sticks because we have to make sure that the piece stays together. I just cut the tips off of them mostly because I don't like the way they look. And if you're going to sell it, it's nice to know that if people turn it on the back, they don't see popsicle sticks just kind of holding <laughs> their art together. I arranged these in a way so the holes weren't straight down one side. I don't really know what the madness was behind this, but in my mind, if people did notice there were holes, they weren't just right down one side. <laughs> so I decided to take some painter's tape and plug up the holes on the back. So as we seal them in through the front, this will stop anything from oozing out. Then I grabbed some Gorilla Glue gel and put a couple little dollops on the back here and then some hot glue and put in between. It's a good idea to try and not overlap your glue that is going to give you that long lasting hold with your hot glue because it's a good chance that if you overlap them they might cancel one or the other out and if you're reselling pieces or giving them as gifts or you want them to last for a long time in your home you don't want the possibility of that glue coming apart to fill up the holes use whatever makes you feel fuzzy inside i've used wood putty spackling caulking joint compound and today we're going to use some of tim holt's texture paste at this point in my life i feel like i've used this enough to know once it dries it's going to make sure these holes are nice and plugged up for the edges, I'm going to just take some antique Waverly wax and a baby wipe and get a nice little brown tint around the edges. I'm going to pop a little picture of our dupe up here in the corner so you can see how beyond that gray paint, we do have some brown stain kind of showing through right around the edges. And that's all I'm trying to do here is mimic that. So I'm not worried about filling in the whole thing with antique wax. Use whatever kind of paint you want. I like to use chalk paint and mix it with different acrylics. I find that if I take some chalk paint, I can really create different color variations with like one coat kind of coverage. And if you use just a little bit of water, you can also 
spread your paint out. Now, I wouldn't go spraying it in the bottle, but you know, we be bougie on a budget, people, so we gotta spread our craft supplies where we can, and I can for sure just like spray in this wood right here, little bit, couple little squirty squirts, and then smoosh our paint all around. And it really gives a nice coverage and allows us to blend different color paints in really well. I started with the lighter color here and I'm just using a baby wipe to spread this around and then I come in with the darker color. And you can see the lighter paint is still wet. It blends really good. If you can keep your surface wet, that's a little tip, you know what I mean? Keep it wet. Get your mind out of gutter, people. We're crafting, okay? Keep it wet. We're crafting. <laughs> paint. Okay, move on. The piece was blended really well together. However, in the picture, there are some really dark sections and I wanted to create that without having it too blended. So I decided to take some of Antiques Waverly Wax with the dark paint I already had just to tint it a smidge. And you'll notice that the paint is still wet on our piece. This is allowing the long strokes that I'm creating with the brush to blend in, but still pop enough that that darkness is going to really be bold on our piece. If you do this once your paint is completely dry, you will really be able to see paintbrush streaks. And you want to make sure you go the whole flow of the board so you don't have abrupt stops in your paint. A good rule of thumb is if you want your paint to flow, don't stop your brush in the middle of a project. Go all the way across and make sure it's a little wet and it will still blend without leaving paintbrush strokes, stops, and streaks. For our tree, we're only going to need to use a fan brush and you can use different colors of green to accomplish this. I did not make the tree look exactly like the tree in the picture because I think that is a difficult tree to paint if you're new to painting. And I know a thousand percent that using a fan brush to recreate a Christmas tree is the easiest way. So if you muck up, it is not a big deal. It is usually extremely easy to fix. I like to go in with my darker colors first. And for this, since I really want it to fill the center with darker colors and have some of that bolder dark green on the edges, I started with that bolder dark green first and kind of got the shape of the tree going. And all you do is put a little bit on the edge of your fan brush and just tap, 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 and just build it up. That's all we're doing here. And you can switch out different colored greens as you go along. When you're happy with how you have it built up, grab you some white paint and then just tapity tap 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 right on the edges. Be very ginger with this people and here's why I say that. You want to make sure that there's not a ton of white paint on the brush as you're going through and doing this throughout your tree because then you'll have globs of white and it's going to be hard to create that branch looking effect like I'm doing here with the tree. As you can see, there's barely any paint on this fan brush. So me just doing a little tap, tap, tap in different sections, even in the center, it is giving the tree the appearance that the branches are going different ways. When you're happy how this looks and stay around the edges of the branches, you can come in how I am here with a couple little thick layers just to add for that snowfall effect like something landed heavier in this section than it did on the rest of the tree. If you got a stencil, use the stencil. If you have a Cricut or stiletto, whatever the silhouette. <laughs> a little whatever machine you want to print you out a stencil you go right ahead I decided to just freehand this mostly because to me it looked like whoever had painted this freehanded it as well 
So I thought I was just going to do the same thing and give it my best go. And I wrote it how I felt comfortable writing it. So it looked authentic and natural instead of just trying to mimic the way they had the words written. So let's take a real quick look at our itsy piece that we are duping today. And now let's check mine out. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if you've seen that countdown going differently and if you plan on trying any of these throughout the rest of our holiday season. As always, thank you all so much for stopping by. I appreciate all of you and until next time.